What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Avenge channel. And today's episode, we start a multi-part series on this, what I assume is going to be a gigantic kind of build. One of those useless builds that only makes sense to do on YouTube that I've been wanting to do for a while. So, without further ado, this is what we have. Now this is a 1980s era, I'm not sure the exact year, um, a Tira jet. Um, from what I know about these, which is very little, these were actually uh, manufactured in Quebec, Canada, right up until, I believe, 1994. They actually started production in 1969. Now, there's a two, there's three or four different variations of these, actually. As you can see, we have a fiberglass body on this one, but they actually come with a 6x6, which is a six-wheel drive unit. They actually come with a different body style that's like a Corvette-type body style, and they even have the original, which is a whole steel structure. So all this aluminum is actually all steel, and the cool thing about this is I actually picked up two of these. I do have a steel bodied one. I have this fiberglass one and I picked up a bunch of parts, probably like an eight foot box um, off of a pickup truck full of parts, axles, drive shafts, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. Now what makes these really cool, well, I think they're kind of cool, is that this is all time four wheel drive and they're amphibious. Now the way this one steers, it actually does have a knuckle system up front, which I will try to turn for you guys. So it's not very similar to what you would see in an Argo. These were actually kind of uh, made for agriculture and I guess forestry type uh, situations. But as you can see, we only have one seat here now. There's actually supposed to be a seat here and a seat over here. So it's a three seater unit and you kind of steer in the center. Um, if you look down here, this is actually how they drive the front, um, I guess you would call it a drive shaft or a front axle that actually is up here. So this chain actually runs the full length of the body and it gets ran with a sprocket that's actually in here. Now, as you can see, we have a chain case that takes a secondary clutch, like a CVT type um, snowmobile type setup. So these actually came, I believe, with a 22 horsepower-ish, um, 24 horsepower maybe, um, four stroke engine. Um, they were air-cooled, but one thing that I have been reading a little bit online is that a lot of people lose those engines because, uh, albeit this one is a little bit open now because, well, I'm not really sure why, but um, I think they had like a bit of an overheat issue because there is actually a cover that goes on this. I do have it, but uh, it's not in this video. And where there's just down in the engine compartment air, uh, where it's air cooled, it does overheat. So I think maybe we will put some type of liquid cool thing in this. I'm not really sure what our power plant's gonna be. But, 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 what are we gonna do with this thing? Well, I kinda wanna do a full resto mod um, if you will, um, fully restore everything, every bearing, every seal. We obviously got to get some sort of power plant for it. And the big thing I want to do with this, I want to keep it amphibious. I want to make sure that it stays amphibious. But once again, the downfall with all this is that we have zero suspension. So I actually went ahead and I bought a bunch of stuff from a UTV, shocks, spindles, axles, a arms, etc., etc., and I'm kind of wondering if we can actually keep this thing amphibious, keep it usable, but add suspension. So that's going to be the main goal. So first, what I might do is actually I'm going to tear all this apart, break it apart, and we're going to take the wheels off, of course, and maybe we'll do a little bit of a quick mock-up just to see if it's even remotely any point to it whatsoever. We'll all make a couple brackets. We'll tack the um, A arms and shocks on, see our height difference. So guys, I thought this was actually pretty cool. As you can see by our wheels or our rim here, as you want to say, is that uh, the offset of our mounting flange or hub, um, they're actually the exact same. So that means that you can use these wheels on the front and the back, which makes that really cool because it keeps it simple, which is great because I'm pretty simple myself. But as you can see from this angle, um, our rear drive axle is actually narrower than our front drive axle, but the tub itself is actually shaped narrower up front than out back. One thing I did notice with this one as well is I guess these must be pretty hard to get into because these uh, the seat doesn't really move, but this guy kind of modified a uh, socket to fit just for like a quick release hub on your steering wheel. So I'm not sure if it would pass a tech inspection, but I guess it works for out in farmland. 
So guys, I actually had to set up Mr. Puller here to uh, get this guy off the shed. If anyone is listening out of context here, they're probably going to think that uh, you're watching a totally different program right now. But that was a stupid sentence. So you know what I mean. So let's see if we can get this uh, puller to pull the hub off the shed. Um, they're kind of kicking my ass. I'm not really sure why. I did preheat them. I bought a blood red in them, as you can kind of see here with my gun. You see how the color has changed. But I actually have bent this hub with the puller. Now, there is a keyway here, but there is a hole on the back as well. So it leads me to believe that that should just kind of essentially slide off. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more research on that because I don't really want to, I don't plan on using these hubs again, but I, it, you know, it kind of sucks because there are people restoring these, you know, on a daily and uh, that probably could have helped someone out. For me specifically, I don't really care about the hubs. I can probably just cut them off, but I'd like to save them as much as I could. Now, so what I did, I came over here to the front because I find when I'm uh, kind of fed up with something when I'm doing it and it's not really working out, I move on to something that kind of makes me feel like I won something for the day. So we got that side off. That came out pretty easy. As you can see, this is the setup here. And it just has a universal joint inside, spline shaft. As you can see in here, oops, sorry. So, but this side, I just noticed as I started taking it apart really quick, it spins pretty freely and that chain's not moving and the other side's not moving. So that leads me to believe that there's either a U-joint failure in here, the axle is probably twisted off, not really sure. Gotta take this part and see what the issue is. So what the actual issue was on the uh, left side was that this universal joint wasn't seated properly on that spline shaft there on the hub assembly itself. So you can kind of see it's a little bit rounded off and whatnot. But uh, I'm not really sure why that wasn't really seated properly. It's kind of... But uh, something was definitely out of alignment. So we pretty much have the two hubs off the front. Um, the steering knuckle, I guess you could say. As you can see inside, we do have a splined axle. But it's very sloppy. So that leads me to believe that there is, in fact, the bearings wore out here. And I would assume the seal. So this thing definitely doesn't float. But it's pretty cool, they got a grease nipple here. Um, the next plan of attack, I guess, is to get rid of these bolts, haul this piece off, and uh, see if we can get this front axle out. And uh, once I get all that apart, I'm gonna move back to the back here and see why this really isn't playing very nice with me. But uh, I will win. I'm too stubborn to lose, and if that gotta be cut off and made into liquid, that's what's gonna happen. Well, there was definitely a bearing and a seal here at one point of its life, but uh, you can see this inner race here that was a bearing at uh, some point in history. But uh, if you come in here, you can actually see where the ball bearings were actually riding. Now that could be the outer race, I'm hoping. Kind of looks like it may, but uh, I'll clean that up because I am going to reuse these in a certain way because these are a seal face. So I'm thinking if I probably chop this down and uh, utilize the seal and the bearing face. Hopefully it's not wore too bad. If not, I may have to machine it down and uh, just get a bigger bearing or something. But yeah, um, that's been kind of living in water and swamp for quite a while. But we're, uh, we're moving along. We're, uh, we're getting somewhere. So we have all this apart. As you can see, this one is pretty much, I think, it's probably gonna be destroyed, but I won't be able to tell until it is in fact really cleaned up. This one here still looks like it's really good because you can kind of still see that seal in there. So that one might be savable. So this might work out pretty easy because I might be able to just cut this piece of pipe away from the flange. And it looks like its own separate unit that seals um, the actual tub from the elements. So that's probably gonna work out in our favor. Um, I just have to keep washing my hands to touch the phone and to 
camera because everything is just so full of grease. Now, as you can see, this is the front drive shaft. We have a spline shaft, which is nice. Um, there is a keyway right here, as you can see. Keyway, and that is for our front gear, drive gear. That's in pretty good shape as well, so I guess we'll be able to save that. But, as you can see how greasy it is, this here is actually the, I'm not sure if that's a retaining clip. Not really sure until we kind of clean that up, but you can just tell how much grease is around it, which is a good thing. I mean, it's better to see grease than uh, just be dried up, I guess. But, uh, just leave that there, so when I pick it up, when I got clean hands, that uh, that's the first thing I grab. You know how that works. So, we got all the front end apart, really. We got the shaft apart, which looks good. I'll clean all that up, and we'll order some bearings and, and uh, seals for that. Now, this here is gonna learn, and I'm gonna teach it. All right, guys, so um, this back axle with the flanges and whatnot, they're kind of, uh, I guess they're winning, but I'm gonna get the last laugh. So, I've actually put so much pressure on these with the uh, the puller that I'm actually mushrooming the end of this. Along with this flange, I kind of have it warped now. I'm gonna have to modify this axle anyways for what I kind of have envisioned to uh, be able to drive the side axles for this thing. So what I might actually end up doing is just cutting the axle as flush as I can get it probably to here. So probably what we're gonna use is either a good old zippy zip, or we're gonna come over to bandside Jim Duggan here. See what we can do. I actually went to town on this thing. Check it out. We got the back axle out. That back hub, once again, that uh, I guess the hub's one in a way, I guess, because I still don't have them off. But I'm gonna have to cut that one off as well, I believe. And uh, that's not gonna be a big deal anyways, because I'm not gonna be able to utilize those as far as I'm concerned. It would have been a good option to have, but anyways, under different planes. Now, as you can see along here, the way this is kind of driven is just one big keyway. Almost died. Um, this second keyway here is actually for the drive sprocket, which is still over here in the tub, um, right here. So there's a keyway here, and there's a long keyway that actually goes through this gearbox of sorts. Now, the one thing that I think is really cool with this, well, not cool, I guess it's just simple, but um, this is the pillow blocks. This is how it kind of, I guess you would call these a pillow bearing. Anyways, not really sure of the terminology, but it has a seal here and a bearing, so that's gonna be pretty easy to rebuild. Now, that piece there actually goes right here, as you can see, and as you can see, someone came in here before and cut that out. I don't know if they cut around it or whatever they done there, but we'll fix this. We're probably gonna end up cutting this whole tub here, putting in a nice solid chunk of, I don't know, one eighth or something. I'll, uh, I'll kind of wing that part of it, but if you guys ever go to do one of these and take all this apart back here, um, essentially, I drove everything to my left, looking at the machine, steering wheel. They kind of call this a driver side because the steering wheel is offset, but it's a center driving machine. Um, I shoved everything that way, and it all came out very, very easily. I was surprised. Uh, for the most part, it's all coming apart pretty easily. Hopefully, it goes back together just as easy, but I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. So, I think I'm going to end off here for the night and probably just come back at you tomorrow morning. And uh, I think our next move is probably gonna be fix the bottom because I do wanna have this thing amphibious. That's the main goal with this thing. And uh, I wanna rebuild all the bearings, all the seals, that axle. It would be really cool if we got some sort of axle that we had full splines on to make that stronger because that is definitely, definitely gonna be a weak point here now as far as I'm concerned. Essentially this keyway drives everything, your four wheels, the chain, well, this sprocket, so this drives, this drives the sprocket, but you get what I'm saying. Essentially, it's keyways that drive the main power plant of this thing. So, as you can see, I bent that up pretty good. This is gonna be really cool to rebuild, really easy. So, it is the next morning, and I've just cleaned up around here a little bit. As you can see, we cleaned everything up. I have the um, spindle and the A-arm here, just for a little mock-up to size this thing up. So, before we dive into it, the goal of today, it's actually to, either make this thing a full roller or at least get it to the point that I can start mounting suspension parts on it. Now, before we go any further, I think we should probably address a few elephants in the room because if you've gotten this far into the video, 
you definitely have a few questions. Now, the Tira jet, the El Terrible jet, um, the main chassis of these are right here. So you have two pieces up there and a piece of square stock along here. And of course that draws your axle. So the main structure that you, the seat and everything is bolted to is actually in here. So this piece here is actually a tub. Now I will be mounting everything essentially to the tub. So when I'm cutting this piece out, I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna plate this. I don't know if I'm gonna come in here and cut that out. I'm not really sure until I actually get into it. But as you can see right here, someone has repaired this before and they have welded around there and they've essentially welded the tub to the actual chassis, to this piece right here. As you can see, we have a gap here, so that piece is lively, but this piece here is welded. So I don't know, my original plan was to have this in two pieces and uh, kind of fix everything up. But uh, maybe I'll just leave that for now. This is yet to be determined, I'm not sure. But our goal for today, I wanna remove this seat. We're not putting that seat back in ever again. Um, the gearbox, I wanna just do the bearings and seals and stuff in that and make sure that's good. So that's gonna be coming out. And this uh, steering post. Now the steering post, I thought I was gonna to have to drastically change this, but I may have got lucky. I'm not sure for, for sure yet, but uh, Fowler's Law may get me. But uh, I think if I run the right side spindle on the left and the left on the right, I think I'll be able to use, utilize this factory steering piece right here. Now, of course, this is out front, which kind of leads me to believe that it will be in harm's way, but I mean, it's worked so far, so maybe I'm gonna try to save that. So, like I say, the goal of the day is get that over, I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna start cutting the bottom of this. Now, when I plate all this over, or what my, I don't really know what my plan is with this yet, but uh, it will be heavier material going in. This is probably like an 18 gauge material. So I'm probably gonna be putting one eight on the sides and on the bottom up here. Probably a 16 gauge on the bottom in the middle and I'll probably do a one eight or three sixteenth or something back there. Um, another thing we have to kind of talk about is track width. I've been kind of sizing this up as well. Um, it's yet to be determined as well. Um, the widest side by side out there right now guys is probably like the K&M and I believe they're like 74, you can get them 74 inches wide track width. So I don't wanna make it that wide. Well, I mean, let's face it, I'm not building this thing to keep up with those types of side-by-sides. I'm not building it really for anything. But uh, so 74 inches track width is the goal to stay within. Um, as you can see, the front is pretty narrow and the back is really wide because unfortunately that's where your motor and everything goes. Um, with a UTV, of course you get you get um, the narrow front end and the narrow rear end, and that's how you get your suspension travel. That's just the geometry they've done, and that's how you get your long A arms. And... But we're not gonna go that route. So our track width, I'm trying to stay in between 74 inches. That's, that's the goal of that. Um, another thing we will talk about is braking system. This is stuff that's further down the road, guys. We probably shouldn't even be talking about this right now. But as you can see, the brake system on this, is actually just a shaft that locks up the gearbox and that locks up your sprocket and that locks up your front sprocket and you have four wheel disc, disc brake. Um, so we can utilize that again. I mean, it's worked forever. I don't plan on putting any bigger, bigger tires on this thing, but you never know in the future. But as for a power plant, not really sure what this is getting yet. So it's probably gonna be a little more horsepower than what it was from factory for sure. So we can do like a hydraulic conversion on this if this isn't enough. Um, we can utilize it out here on the uh, spindles and whatnot because I do have the spindles and I do have the rotors and I do have the uh, hydraulic calipers. So we can run it externally like every other thing in existence. But the less cables and stuff I, had to, I have to route inside the better because the less chance we have for leaking when we do uh, get this thing in the water. So that's our goal for today. I'm gonna to haul all that apart and we can go from there, tip this thing over. And I'm just gonna start chopping the bottom out and replacing pieces and uh, it's gonna be kind of a fabrication welding type day. Now you may be asking why are we even really trying to build this thing with suspension? Well, I kind of thought it would be cool because when you get a UTV or some type of buggy. It's always a tube chassis. Now that's for structural rigidity and I, I get that. 
I'm not saying I don't get that. But when you see those things in like mud and water and muskeg and bog and etc. etc., all that bog and everything goes in everywhere else and it weighs you down and it stops you and it just makes you kind of caught up in everything. So I thought this would be a cool rig to have a tub that would essentially just slide over everything. But it may slide, but what may end up happening is where you have so much surface area right now with a little bit of weight, maybe it just may stick and just won't move anywhere. But there's also options that we can probably skin it with plastic or something like that. I can see us having to build a custom set of A-arms that's probably going to bring our track with out further again, which is going to be a pretty cool part of the video, but uh, that's definitely going to be in the future. So let's take the gearbox out, the seat, and let's see what we can do with that steering post. And then I'm going to flip it over and we'll start cutting. <laughs> So I let go of this uh, brace here <laughs> and I was thinking that it was held in by probably this point, this point, and probably this just kept it from rocking back and forth. But uh, let's check this out. The only thing holding that in there was actually this. <laughs> here is our gearbox. It was literally just held in by this one brace. Um, Obviously, I don't really know how, there doesn't seem to be any mounting points down here. So this was just laid on the tub. Hopefully I didn't do any damage. I'll find out when I clean it up a bit better. But uh, <laughs> I just find it funny how like things, I mean, I guess where would it go? I guess the brake caliper, the mechanical caliper held it in place. Ultimate flotation on your brake disc. But uh, not really sure if that's right either. But I don't see any spot to put a clip. Maybe it was supposed to be a little bit of a washer type thing. Not really sure. Um, but yeah, we're definitely gonna scrap this and I'm gonna clean it up. Is that a crack? Hopefully that's just casting, but it might be a crack. Um, so I think I actually have another one of these up to the, up where my parts are located. But uh, clean all that up, of course. If there is a crack into it, I could always aluminum weld it, I guess. We're at the stage now. <laughs> you can see where this was actually kind of just laid in there, which I think is crazy. I, I, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to mount here somehow. We'll, uh, we can fix that for sure. And uh, that may work out, I'm not really sure. It would be cool if I could get rid of this piece here where this was the factory exhaust came out, as you can see in there. Maybe I can get rid of this and shove that over a little bit and then maybe I can get like a two cylinder or a three cylinder or something in here. But um, yeah, that's where we're at now. We're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna start cutting, I think. it over as you can see in the little short time lapse there and uh, now you can really see that this was in fact patched up before um, not really a great job but I'm gonna fix all that that'll be fine so what I'm actually thinking is the way this is designed and I believe this is kind of the factory thing hopefully I can get in there this is kind of the flange where all this bolts together but I think I'm going to actually come up probably start here flat and go back. So what I'm going to do, I'll put a bolt out through there, weld it really good and solid on the back, and then I won't have to worry about that. Um, same with here, there is a bolt hole here, of course, and I'm going to do the same thing, follow that contour back, and probably just re-skin it. Now, I'm thinking, probably to here is going to be one eight plate, 
and that's going to give us pretty, you know, that'll give us a lot of meat here that's going to be able to take a few smacks as opposed to this 18 gauge or whatever. Probably from there back to here, we'll probably do a 16 gauge skid, get rid of all this. As you can see, there's quite a drastic hole over there. And probably from here back again, probably one eighth, and I'll come back. I'm not sure if that's, not really sure if that's the actual chassis there. I won't know until I cut it out. But uh, once again, probably come back here, come up, angle, and then meet here again. So by doing that, I can either come up here and then come back down to this elevation, or I keep it all one elevation and then put a nice couple bends here and bend it out flat. So you'll have, almost have like a, a boat body essentially. But that's where we're at. I'm going to start chopping it up. everything out um, my original plan didn't work out the way I wanted it to because I wanted to do this in sections just so it would have kept everything a little bit square but at the same time this is the main chassis of this thing the main structural component so as you can see where the plate was sandwiched essentially down over it when I came out with the plasma cutter I ended up cutting into that so I'll have to repair that but other than that it's it's a uh, pretty solid but once I started cutting and I started to see what was underneath here, I was like, I might as well cut it all out and probably take the pressure washer to all this, get all this moisture out, let it dry, and essentially let it dry out, put a nice, I don't know, rust oleum or rust, some type of rust paint onto that before I start skimming it over. So I guess with all that being said, I'm probably gonna have to end the video here because by the time that dries and this video is probably gonna get a little bit long anyways. So perhaps what we're gonna do, I'm gonna bring that out, pressure wash that, let it dry. And on the next video, um, I'll probably show skinning all this in. And then we need to deal with our axles and uh, not really the goal I wanted to hit in this video, but hey, sometimes it never really works out. But uh, thanks for tuning in. As you can tell, this is our project for quite a while. So, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. If you like what you see, like, subscribe. There's a big, big project coming up after this one. We gotta get this one out of the way first before we bring that one down, but that is the next project. So if you're into this kind of fabrication and chopping and making something out of nothing, um, it's probably a channel for you. So thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.